For those of you that don't know me, my name is Rick Story. Peter Joseph Casper Sr. is the brother of my mother, Jean Catherine Story. I would like to share with you who Uncle Pete was to me. I know very little of his childhood, but after my mom passed a year ago, we found a letter that my mom wrote to her mother, Marie, back in the late 1930s. Marie Casper was in the hospital, and my mom, age 14, was in quarantine with smallpox. The letter went on to say how she is being good, but Peter is being a stinker, <laughs> and that she would try to be nice to him for her sake. She also mentioned later in the letter how she broke out of quarantine to go on a date to see Gone with the Wind, so we must keep things in perspective. <laughs> my memories of Uncle Pete go back to my early childhood. Growing up, most Thanksgiving, Christmas, and some Easter holidays were spent with my aunts and uncles and cousins at my parents' house. Uncle Bud and Uncle Pete would start talking about some invention or how they would solve some problem, and you couldn't get their attention if the house was on fire around them. <laughs> now, I don't know how my mom could have said such things about Uncle Pete in her letter. When <laughs> Uncle Pete wasn't talking to Uncle Bud, he was always very quiet and reserved. He never made a spectacle out of himself. Yeah. I don't know what my mom was talking about. <laughs> As I got older, I have such fond memories of visiting Uncle Pete who took us kids out ice fishing in the winter and fishing from the pier in the summer. He taught us how to catch, clean, and cook bluegills fresh from the lake behind the house. I looked at Uncle Pete as one of the most interesting and smartest men I had or will ever know. To me, he was a cross between MacGyver and Albert Einstein. <laughs> Uncle Pete was always there for my family. He taught my kids to bait, catch, and release their own fish. He was also Matt's sponsor for his confirmation. He always had time to come out and fix one of our appliances or talk to me over, through it over the phone. When we would visit Uncle Pete and Aunt Lois, they were the best hosts. Uncle Pete always made sure everyone had enough to eat. Uh, I'm so glad you got there. Oh, couldn't find them. Here was a man that could rebuild a car or build his own home or a telescope to track the stars or build a model remote control boat that was better than anything on the market. Even in the 80s, he could still sail his boat or in his 80s, he could even sail the boat or swim in his lake. It wasn't the 4th of July to me unless I was watching fireworks from his pier. Uncle Pete took to computers and smart smartphones like a fish to water. He was always excited to show you the latest app he got or the latest trick he learned. One of my best memories was a vacation we took together when Uncle Pete was 80. Twelve of us, aged 2 to 80, took the train to Glacier National Park. There was Sue, Matt, Andrea, Rebecca and me, Jim, Cassie and Trevor, Pete and Naomi, and Uncle Pete and Aunt Lois. We were a captive audience on the train for 28 hours to Uncle Pete and his iPhone. <laughs> it was the best vacation and I am so happy I will always have those memories. A few years later you could see Uncle Pete starting to slow down. Here was a man who at 80 had more energy than most children. He knew it was happening and he commented on how his get up and go had got up and gone. He knew that old age was finally setting in. After he found out that he only had six to nine weeks to live, he handled the news with dignity and a sense of humor that was typical of Uncle Pete. Uncle Lane, Aunt Pat, Terry, Sue, Jim, Cassie, Trevor, Nathan, and I had dinner with Uncle Pete and Aunt Lois at Pete and Naomi's house on December 17, 2017. Uncle Pete joked about going into the next life with his iPhone. He wanted to be buried with it. That night he said that he had accepted his faith and the only thing he asked that he had of a funeral just like his sister Jean. He wanted everyone to celebrate his life, not mourn his passing. Well, I can just imagine the kind of party the Caspers are having in heaven now that they are all reunited. I have one final story to share with you before I close. 
When Uncle Pete found out that he was going to die, he, the Caspers went out to start looking to making funeral res- uh, arrangements. I, know they, I knew they were going, so on Tuesday, January 23rd, I sent Naomi a task, text uh, to see if Uncle Pete had purchased his casket yet. Naomi replied, LOL, he's getting cremated, but they are renting a casket for vacation, and it's all re- arranged. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Sometimes it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. (laughs) Well, I I read that a couple of times, and I replied, What? (laughs) Renting vacation? (laughs) Now two minutes passed without a response from Naomi, and I'm envisioning Uncle Pete and Aunt Lois. Come on, Lois. Let's give this, te- this casket a test drive. <laughs> I felt it was not without the realm of possibility. Exactly. Put a motor on the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, silence, this, uh, finally the silence was broken, and Naomi replied, LOL, visitation. <laughs> <laughs> she laughed so hard she couldn't type, and by this time I had tears in my eyes. You see, that's how this family is. There's always time for a good laugh. In closing, I would like to end with the immortal (laughs) words of Peter J. Casper Sr. Don't worry about us, Uncle Pete. We will be fine, God willing, and the creek don't rise. (laughs) Thank you.